Once you've finished setting up your NMR residues and you've peak picked your 3D spectra using the pick and assign module, it's time to start linking your residues sequentially and then sequence specifically assigning them. You can see that I've got my layout set up such that I've got my HSQC spectrum here on the right and then I have two 3D spectrum displays each showing in blue the CBCACONH spectrum and in green and purple the HNCACB spectrum. Now I'm going to start using our backbone assignment routine which you can find in the assign menu under backbone assignment or simply type BB. In this module we'll first need to select our NMR chain which has all our NMR residues in it. Then here click on the gear icon to bring up the settings box and we need to select a match module. I'm just going to select one of our 3D displays. I'm also going to uncheck the show sequential strips just for clarity in this video. Now I'm just going to take this module and tuck it away underneath the HSQC. It's also going to be useful to have our sequence graph module open. You can access this from the view menu under sequence graph or type SG. This module comes in two parts. The lower part contains the protein sequence and the upper part contains all the NMR residues in the selected chain. You can see that there are predictions for the residue type and if you've set your experiment types then you can also see these coloured lines which show links between the NMR atoms where these are linked through peaks in the colour-coded spectra. At the moment we don't need this just yet so I'm just going to tuck it away. Now in order to start our backbone assignment we select one of our residues in the backbone assignment module and double click it. This will produce a number of changes in the spectrum displays. You can see here in my HSQC I've navigated to residue at 100 and the same here in this left hand 3D display and I've got lines drawn at the C alpha and C beta chemical shifts. In the middle display, this is my match display, I then see three matches. And because I'm going in the I plus one direction, I will want to find these matches in the CBCACONH spectrum. So I'm going to turn the other one off for now. You can see up here in the header for the 3D and the HSQC, they show which residue we're at. And these matches show on the left hand side that it's an I plus one match. So we're going in the I plus one direction towards the C terminus. On the right hand side, you can see the percentage of how well the match has worked. And in the middle, we get the project ID for the NMR residue. So the best match is this first one here on the left. So this must be the residue, which is I plus one to at 100. In order to set that link, I simply grab hold of this uh, header and drag it onto these little arrows or chevrons on the right of my 100 residue. That then creates a link between NMR residues 100 and 12, automatically navigates on to residue 12 in this window. And you can see here, these two residues have been put into a new NMR chain hashtag 2, the hashtag is there to indicate that this is an ordered chain, so the residues are sequentially linked. And if we sort this by index, then we get them in the correct order. So as well as navigating to residue at 12 in our 3D and our HSQC, uh, the program has automatically already found the next lot of matches for the I plus 1 residue to at 12. Again, this left-hand one seems to be a good match, so I can grab hold of it, drop it onto these arrows, and the next link is made. The next set of matches are found, 
and in this way I can just keep going sequentially linking the residues one after another. I can also do the sequential linking in the I minus one direction. So rather than double clicking on residue 100, I would double click on residue 100 minus one. And then you can see, rather than drawing these lines through the alpha and beta of 100, these links and lines are drawn through the alpha and beta of the residue previous to 100. We now need to find the matches in the HMCACB spectrum. And we can see here there is a very nice match. And this time, because I'm going in the I minus 1 direction, I need to grab hold of my header and drop it onto the left hand set of arrows or chevrons. And you can see now the chain is being continually built in the I minus 1 direction. And I can keep going in the same way. Now it's worth having a look to see what's happened in our sequence graph window in the meantime. We'll need to go to correct chain and you can see here these residues have been linked together now. You can also see down here that we found a possible match to the sequence. Now this SAS motif is quite distinctive and there is only one of those in the protein so that is probably the correct assignment. So I can actually make that assignment sequence specific by taking hold of one of these NMR residues and then dropping it onto the sequence and you can see that it changes colour and then I'm asked do you really want to do this? Yes. And this part now turns green. And those residues have now been placed into a new NMR chain, which is NMR chain A, which is the same as the real chain A, which is my protein sequence. I can now perhaps start on a new stretch of residues. Sometimes you will find that these links don't work quite so well. Here, for instance, it's very difficult to distinguish which one is going to be the next residue because these two glycines have pretty much identical C alpha chemical shifts. So we're going to have to hope that we can find a link to that glycine from the other direction. Instead, let's try going in the I minus one direction. And if we now have a look and see what's going on in our sequence graph, you will notice that there are in fact two suggestions for where this might be. So at the moment it's still unclear what the exact sequence specific assignment of this stretch of amino acids would be. But we can see that the next I minus one residue, here is a leucine and there is a valine. Those have very different chemical shifts, so that hopefully once we add our next I minus one residue, you can see this is automatically added, and now we know it must be this motif. We can make the sequence specific assignment here. And even once we've made the sequence specific assignment, we can continue to link residues if we so wish.